And we're here at EDIPEC 2019 and I'm absolutely delighted and honoured. It's a real joy to have with me His Excellency Mohammed uh, Barkindo. He is of course the Secretary General of OPEC. Thank you for taking the time, sir. You've been very busy. You've been talking about the world outlook, talking about the state of the market. Where do you see the market well, now? It's a pleasure meeting you, Etna, and especially at EDIPEC uh, 2019, which has broken new records in terms of attendance, in terms of participation, over 100 and 40,000 delegates, uh, I think we all uh, uh, owe it to the Emirates, uh, to the uh, Ministry of Energy under the able leadership of Suhail al Mazrui and ADNOC uh, under the stewardship of Sultan al Jabr and all their wonderful staff uh, for really continuing to raise the bar uh, to carry the flag uh, for this uh, important industry uh, of the world. Now, uh, talking about the current market conditions, uh, we remain optimistic that the market is on course uh, to sustaining the relative stability going forward. Of course, we have very important uh, end-of-year ministerial meetings in uh, Vienna uh, next month, and uh, we are working with our technical partners, both within OPEC member countries and the non-OPEC, uh, between now and the ministerial conference uh, to review uh, the current conditions, to resharpen our projections uh, with more clarity on the data, especially for 2020, uh, so that uh, the ministers would be able to take informed decisions. Now you've been very busy while you're here, you're meeting with CEOs, you're meeting with ministers. It's great being able to catch up with you for a few minutes. But what's been the dialogue? What are the consuming countries looking for? You've had so many meetings with other people here. Uh, I think it's a very important question you ask because OPEC is not only dialoguing with producers outside of OPEC, uh, especially countries in the Declaration of Cooperation, so that together we would continue to maintain stability in the market. But we are also, as producers, reaching out to consuming countries. Uh, why? Because we have a vested interest in oil continuing to be the fuel of choice for the foreseeable future. Oil is just one energy source in the basket. And you are, as you are well aware, this transition uh, is talking about uh, carbon emissions, a carbon constraint wall uh, in the transition in which all the sources of energy have a role to play. And for us in the oil sector, we have to take into account the views of the consuming nations so that they will continue to uh, see oil favorably in their energy mix and continue to sustain the demand levels uh, that we are seeing. So it's been a very worthwhile uh, series of dialogues of meetings with producers, with consuming nations, with the IOCs, with the service companies, and very important, with those who are putting their money to fund our projects. Uh, the banking community, they have turned out in large numbers here. We have a lot of questions uh, for them on their appetite to continue to fund oil and gas projects. Now, of course, we have to look forward to, look back on where OPEC's come from, look forward to where it's going, and I know, what is it, 60 years, Baghdad. This is going to be a big event for you and a big recognition of the great work that's being done. How important is this in the plans? Uh, Baghdad will be a historical milestone. Uh, six years ago, September 14th, 1960, five founding members uh, of OPEC met in Baghdad and founded this organization. Uh, next September 2020 will be 60 years. In these 60 years, we have gone through almost five or six oil cycles, uh, a number of challenges. We have expanded from five to now 14 or 13. We have extended the horizon, the boundaries to work with non-OPEC countries. It's a totally different energy landscape uh, than we had 60 years ago. And we are in the midst of this recession. So the Baghdad Conference, uh, the commemoration of the 60-year anniversary of OPEC in Baghdad uh, next year, will give us the opportunity to take stock of how we fared in this journey of 60 years and how did we uh, uh, 
uh, tackle the various challenges in the last six decades. What did we do right? What did we do wrong? What should we have done differently? Uh, and very importantly, to chart a roadmap for the next 60 years. And when you look at that roadmap for the next 60 years, it's all very different. Big data, technology, it's all driving it. How important is that? It is very important. It is becoming more complex, more challenging. Uh, we had here for the first time in ADIPEC, uh, OPEC working uh, with the Ministry of Energy under uh, Suhail al Mazrui, uh, convened the first round table on big data, which was very successful. And we agreed uh, at that round table that we are going to continue this as a series and even in between ADPEC in, intersessionally uh, because of the growing importance of big data uh, in the oil and, and, and gas industry. It's a completely different uh, uh, terrain, uh, energy scene, which is never static and continuously changing. So it's in the interest of the industry and OPEC to continue to adapt to these changes and uh, be ahead of the curve.